Welcome to our first lesson on natural science dealing with plants and animals on Earth. I hope you will enjoy today's exciting and informative lesson. Today, we will discuss more about living things and their habitats. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the life processes that living things go through, define what a habitat is and how it gives what living things need to survive. Recognize different habitats. Define what biodiversity means and why it's important for a healthy environment. You will also be able to explain how human actions affect biodiversity. Look out for new words and write down their meanings in your notebook. These skills set the stage for more advanced learning in the future. You may remember from what you learned last year that living things carry out seven life processes. These are the characteristics of living things. Movement. All living things move, even plants. Respiration. Living things breathe and get energy from plants. Sensitivity. Living things can detect changes in the surroundings. Nutrition. Living things take in and use food. Excretion. Living things are able to get rid of waste. Reproduce. Living things make more living things of the same type. Growth, all living things grow. The earth is home to the most amazing diversity of animals and plants. Each animal and plant naturally chooses where it wants to live, its habitat. A habitat is the natural home of a plant or animal, where it lives or grows. Habitats provide resources plants and animals need to stay alive. For example, an animal needs mainly five things to survive in its habitat. These include air, water, food, shelter and space. South Africa has many different areas with very different climates and land features. This makes South Africa to have many different types of habitats. These habitats range from savannas to coastal regions and dense forests. These different habitats provide homes for a many different types of animals and plants. Some of South Africa's habitats support iconic species such as lions, elephants, rhinoceroses, and a rich variety of plant and bird species. South Africa has a wide variety of indigenous plants and animals. Indigenous means naturally occurring in an area. If plants and animals are indigenous it means they have always lived in a certain area. South Africa's plants and animals are therefore originally from South Africa. They have not been imported from other countries. South Africa has more than 20,000 different species of indigenous flowering plants. People come from all over the world come to South Africa to look at these plants and animals. Look carefully at the different habitats found in South Africa. How many habitats can you see? Name these habitats. Can you identify the type of habitat in the area where you stay? You can pause the video and answer these questions. The Albany thicket is found in a part of South Africa called the Eastern Cape. It's filled with tough, spiky bushes and chubby plants that store water creating a home for unique birds and small animals. South Africa has a special place called the Namib Desert. It's really dry there with very little rain, and it's known for having some of the tallest sand dunes in the world. The plants and animals in this desert are super tough, like the springbok and oryx. These animals have adapted to the harsh conditions and can live with very little water. In South Africa, there are special places called forests. These are like communities of plants and animals living together. In the forest, you find tall trees like yellowwoods along with ferns and beautiful flowers on the ground. Animals like birds, monkeys, and bugs also call the forest their home. South Africa has a special place called the Finbos Habitat, located in the Western Cape and parts of the Northern Cape. It's known for its unique and colorful plants, like protease, and cool animals like the Cape sugarbird and chameleon. The Karoo is a large, semi-arid region of South Africa. 
It has tough plants and cool animals like springboks and meerkats. The weather can be hot during the day and cold at night. People use it for farming. The Karoo is known for rooibos tea which is a herbal tea made from the leaves of the rooibos plant. The rooibos plant is indigenous to the Karoo region. Rooibos tea is naturally caffeine-free. South Africa has grasslands with green grass and scattered trees. Grasslands are important because they create a natural food chain for animals. People also use grasslands for farming and raising cattle for beef and dairy products. Some grassland areas are used to grow crops like maize, wheat, and sunflowers. All over the earth, there are many different types of habitats such as Arctic Rainforest Wetlands and Aquatic Within each habitat, animals and plants that have adapted to live there. Adapted means the plants or animals have modified themselves to grow and live in a certain habitat. For example, plants or animals can have features that help them to survive in different habitats. The water lily lives in water. It has leaves that are large and flat. The leaves float on the water. The aloe plant lives in dry areas. Its thick and fleshy leaves are able to store water. The rooibos plant grows in dry sandy soil. The leaves of the plant are this and small. This makes the rooibos leaves lose less water and adapt to living in dry areas. Fish live in water and have fins that help them to swim. Zebras live in grasslands and they have legs for walking and running. The white stripes on their bodies can temporarily blind predators such as lions when they run away from them. Biodiversity refers to the variety of living things, plants and animals, found in a habitat. You can also refer to biodiversity as the many different kinds of life in an area. The word biodiversity is made up of two parts, bio and diversity. Bio means life. Diversity means differences or variety. So, when we say biodiversity we are talking about the variety of living things on our planet. It is very important that people protect biodiversity. Humans threaten biodiversity. We destroy habitats to make room for building houses and growing food. We also pollute the earth which only damages nature more. Because of human activity, plants and animals will have nowhere to live and they become endangered. Endangered animals and plants are at great risk of becoming extinct. We have come to the end of our lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I enjoyed seeing all the animals in their different habitats. Let's meet in our next lesson as we are going to learn how scientists count or measure the biodiversity in an area. So until then, stay well.